Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Uh, in this video, we're going to go through the process of uh, titration calculations. Or well, basically, you've cal you've gone through the titration, you've got some data. Now, what do you do? Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the general sort of process that we would use. Um, go through um, a practice kind of e practice example, walking you through those steps, and then it's over to you. Okay. So there's a, a particular kind of format or a kind of a, a template that I would suggest for you to use while we're, we're getting used to um, how we do calculations involving titration data. Okay, and so you've got this a, a copy of this in the booklet that's provided for you already. But so remember that when we're thinking about titrations, that we're thinking about um, you've got you know, reacting two substances together, one that you know, your known reactant, and the other one which you don't know, your unknown reactant, or you only know one part of it, but you don't know the other. And so, what we start off with is, okay, for our known reactant, we know its concentration in mole per litre, and we know its volume in litres, or at least we know its volume, and we can convert that into litres. We can use that to find out the moles of our known reactant. How many, you know, so how many moles of our known reactant was, was involved in that reaction? Okay, by using the mole ratio from the equation, the balanced equation, which um, we should really start have started with at the outset. Through the mole ratio, we can convert this to the moles of our unknown. And then from there, what we're going to do is that then, depending on what exactly the question is asking of us and which of the things that we don't know, we can either determine the concentration of our unknown or we can determine the titration volume of our unknown in litres. Okay? And so, at this point here and here, there's a relationship, a formula that we can use. Okay? So, now there's, there's kind of, well, there's two approaches we can, we can use here. We can use concentration as a conversion factor to go between volume and moles, or we can use the formula which is N equals C times V. The moles equals concentration times volume. Okay? Over on this side, we can do the same approach. We can use um, the relationship of, you know, X, however many moles for every one litre, or we can do, we can rearrange that formula depending on your, your comfort with the algebra or comfort or familiarity with the, the factor label process and how much you want to stick with something more familiar, we can use this formula. The concentration is equal to the moles divided by the volume. Now remember here that the volume must be in litres. It's a really crucial um, point and it trips up lots of students. That they put they start plugging in volumes in mils because that's typically what you're, the unit you're measuring in and then they, they chug on through and it, it might be seeming hunky-dory and they get values that are, are a long way out, or perhaps not even a long way out, and that, that, that they've, they've kind of somehow made multiple errors and it, it kind of seems like it all works out all right. Okay, but so I want you, so you've got this already represented in your, in your booklet. It might be useful to, to um, write it in your, in your notes, in your book as well, so that you can then actually start to kind of use this template. You might even want to set it up so that you've got these boxes that you can put these values into so that you can start over here and trace your way around over to here. But for now, we're going to go through the practice um, exercise that's just underneath this, this template. <clears throat> okay, so in this question that you're told, you've got a solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate, or, which is sodium bicarbonate, at 0 .0, uh, sorry, 100 moles per litre concentration. Okay, that we're told that we use a 25 mil aliquot, now, we haven't really used that word before, but aliquot, as far as amount dispensed by the pipette into the flask. Okay, so we've got 25 mils of, of this. And then what we have is that it's being reacted with a sulfuric acid solution. Okay, with an unknown um, concentration. And based on the titration itself, the 28.35 mils of um, acid was needed to react exactly with our known reactor. Okay, so we're going to start off with an equation. Okay, so net ionic will be the best thing here. So that is, I'm going to cancel out the sulfate, cancel out the sodium, and then establish it from here. So then bicarbonate ion 
reacting with, I'm just going to say H+, even though we recognise hydronium is the actual thing that's involved here, that it's going to be um, easier for us to, to, to look at it this way. Okay, and so going to carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so the salt, so we normally say an acid plus a carbonate gives us salt, carbon dioxide and water. We would have a salt as far as we'd have sodium sulfate left behind. So if we wanted to do it as a full equation, we could do this. So sodium hydrogen carbonate plus sulfuric acid giving us sodium sulfate um, plus carbon dioxide and water. And we would have to put a two there to make it balanced. Okay, now the reason that I would prefer to do this is that I always think that net ionic equations are the go here. Um, that then, but then what we have to do is we have to try and be careful to work backwards from here to here if we do that. Okay, so um, I'll keep both equations there so you can kind of work with that. All right, so we've told that we've got a concentration of 0.1 mole per litre and a volume of 25 mils. Now I'm going to straight up convert that to litres to minimise the chance that I'm going to um, muck that up. Okay, putting those two things together, I can work out my moles. Okay, so I've got um, 0.100 moles per litre for every one litre multiplied by 0 0.02500 litres. And so then in this box, I get 0 0.0025 moles. Okay, so then translating that over into moles of, so I'm going to be using the net ionic equation up here, translating that into the moles of H+. Plus. Okay, so the moles of H+, plus, so from here and here I've got a 1 to 1 mole ratio, so I get 0, 0, 0.0025 0, um, moles of H+. Plus. Okay, so now what I want to do is I now, with the volume that I have over here of 28.35 mils or 0 0.02835 litres, okay, I want to be able to turn that into a concentration. Okay, and so in order to do that, so my concentration of H plus is equal to um, 0 0.00250 moles divided by 0 0.02835 litres. Okay, and so what I get is I get a concentration is 0 0.088 something something moles per litre. Now, look, I appreciate, sorry, just, just as a digress, I, I appreciate that, that using this kind of template it's easier to follow in some respects, but it's also not elegant setting out. But at the moment, I'm just walking you through the process. Okay, you don't actually have to set up your boxes this way um, in future. And I would suggest it's probably not the best strategy, just it's better to actually try and do things a bit more in a linear sort of fashion, but just to get you used to it. Okay, so we've worked out the concentration of H plus of a value of about 0 0.088 moles per litre. Now, the reality is that what we recognise is that we get two moles of H plus for every one mole of sulfuric acid, okay? So that is, the concentration of H plus will be double the sulfuric acid concentration. So our sulfuric acid concentration is this value divided by two. So we get 0 0.044, sorry, squeeze it in underneath, 0 0.0441 moles per litre, okay? So you can see the, the, the slight peril of this kind of an approach as far as now that I've got a, my final answer is tucked in the middle. But just to, to kind of demonstrate this idea that we move from known to unknown, um, and that based on the data that we have and the equation that we've developed, the mole ratio would translates from one side to the other. So this is like our bridge as we go from one to the other. Okay, um, so use this sort of information, use this sort of an approach, um, equation using the data of your known to work out the moles of your known, using the mole ratio from the equation you've developed to get the moles of your unknown, using the moles of your unknown and the volume or the concentration of whichever those two things you know to find out the thing that you don't, using the formula of, you know, concentration equals moles divided by volume. Okay, 
and making sure that you account for any hidden surprises um, or, you know, um, the specifics of what the question is asking you to calculate. Okay, that's a really important thing to do. Make sure that you don't forget to read the question carefully so that what you're answering is actually what the question is asking you to do because sometimes titration questions can be tricky like that. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.